Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the Paradigm AI Smoke Woods and Irons from Callaway. I am Matt Adams for this Golf Central update on this President's Day. Pleased to have had the chance to catch up with NBC News presidential historian for a wide-ranging conversation on our nation's leaders and their love of golf. And Michael, we are honored to have your company tonight. Thank you very much for joining oh, us. Oh, thank on this you. President's honored to be Day. with you, Matt. Thank and you. I should say at the beginning, I'm a terrible golfer, but <laughs> love the game. Well, my first question for you, with what you do have is a vast knowledge of the presidency. Do you have a favorite presidential story that specifically relates to the game of golf? Yeah, one I actually heard from the president concerned, and this was Richard Nixon, uh, 1992, two years before he died. He was living in a townhouse in Park Ridge, New Jersey, and he was nice enough to have me for lunch. And the problem, Matt, is that Obviously, as a historian, I know 10 times more about the president I'm talking to than he knows about me. So I went in and I saw a, pair, a set of golf clubs against the wall. I said to Nixon, Mr. President, I thought you had given up golf. He said, yes, ever since I had a hole in one. And I said, yes, wasn't that with the actor Randolph Scott in 1961? Uh, which was true, but he gave me the strangest look like, you know, what, what kind of a dork is this? So from that point on, I told myself to be a little bit more quiet so the man could speak. That is too classic. Now, reportedly, 17 of the last 20 presidents have played the game of golf. What do you think it is? What's the history between the game and the Oval Office? Well, the big picture history is that, as you know, Matt, you know, the growth of golf in the United States really coincides with the period that we're talking about. Theodore Roosevelt was the first president to be known to play golf in a serious way. William Howard Taft was photographed playing golf. Uh, Woodrow Wilson played, and most of the presidents, just as you were saying, since then. But until World War II in this country, golf was oftentimes seen as an elite sport that was not for anyone who was not pretty rich. That changed in the 1950s as Americans were doing better in terms of prosperity post-war. And also Dwight Eisenhower was probably the most enthusiastic golfer ever to be in the White House. And there were pictures all the time. There you see uh, Eisenhower golfing with Nixon of Eisenhower on the course. Eisenhower uh, was someone who hated being caged, hated being shut up in the White House, and loved being out there on the sun and on the grass and oftentimes played pretty well. Pictures with him with a number of legends there as well. When Indeed. you're talking about golf as a presidential pastime, I guess the obvious question is why? Is, is it to, as you said, to get out in the sunshine and also to get away from some of the stresses of the office? And to get away with people who want things from you, which a president is around all the time, people on his staff, people from Congress, visitors, so to have relative quiet for 18 holes, or Eisenhower even played 27 some days, and to do that with people that you've chosen, it's the opposite of the stressful parts of the job. Is it fair, Michael, to ask you who the best presidential golfer was? Well, the interesting thing is, it's hard to say, because I think you would agree, it's hard to take people from different times on different courses at different ages and compare them all since most of them uh, have not been in tournaments. Although Dwight Eisenhower in his retirement in Palm Springs used to go to a number of the tournaments. Uh, and the same thing was true of Gerald Ford, who after he was inaugurated in 19, uh, he, after he left the presidency on inauguration day, 1977, he flew almost directly to a golf, uh, golf tournament in California. <laughs> Uh, but in, in most cases, you know, these presidents are, don't have that kind of ability. But a very good golfer who made an effort to make, make believe that he was not was John Kennedy. And that was for two reasons. Remember, I said at the beginning that people still saw golf as an elite sport? Yeah. Well, Kennedy was a very rich man, and he did not need to exacerbate people's envy or resentment of his wealth by having a lot of photographs like this of him playing golf. The one you're seeing is Ben Bradley, his great friend, who was a Newsweek editor, who actually was a close friend of mine, would tell me about Kennedy and golf later on. That picture was taken, I guarantee you, by someone on the White House staff and probably was not released. 1960, <laughs> when Kennedy was running for president, 
He was on a golf course with a friend in California. I think it was either at Pebble Beach or near there. He hit off the ball, and the ball landed on the green and began rolling toward the hole. Any of the rest of us would be praying that that ball would go into the into the hole and we'd have a hole in one. Kennedy was loudly praying the opposite, don't let the ball go in. Why was it? Well, Kennedy was running for president. He didn't want it to be known that he had had a hole in one playing this supposedly elite sport uh, to replace Eisenhower, whom he had criticized as spending too much time on the golf course. This is all so fascinating. I want to jump back to an era before that. William Howard Taft, he was said to have played so much golf. In fact, during the 1908 presidential campaign, Teddy Roosevelt urged him to quit playing golf. Has any other president shown the passion for the game that Taft did? Well, I think a lot of them did. Uh, Eisenhower, I've mentioned. Uh, Kennedy did, although perhaps did not play quite as often. Wilson did. But the thing is that the interesting thing here is that this had something of a stigma before World War II that, thank God, it does not now, because people now see a president on the, uh, on the golf course. Most of us would say that's a pretty normal, healthy person, and good for him to be doing something that's, you know, such an antidote to the way he lives his life as president. What about surprise golfers? For example, how many people know that FDR uh, played the game of golf. How passionate was he before his polio diagnosis? Very, before he came down with polio in 1921. During the teens, he was assistant secretary of the Navy, and he played at the Chevy Chase Club, which still exists in Maryland. And he loved it. And of all the things he had to give up when he lost the ability to, to walk, golf was at the very top of those that were most painful for him. I do want to ask you this, though, before we say goodbye. In sure. all of your experiences you've had, what's the coolest piece of presidential golf-related memorabilia that you've seen? Uh, of golf-related memorabilia? Uh, the fact that people send them these golf bags that are now in presidential libraries and they're stored that are so garish and they have their initials and all sorts of symbols on them. <laughs> you know, the people who sent them had, you know, very warm hearts, hearts in doing so. Uh, but remember I was saying at the beginning that presidents want to play golf, but they don't want to be ostentatious. I think, for instance, the idea of George H.W. Bush, who was a very modest man, you know, playing with a big golf bag that was in all sorts of colors with his initials, uh, looking almost like something in The Sopranos, probably would not have worked. You know what's interesting about all this, Michael? Because here we are hmm. in a presidential election year. And normally, any time that you're talking about presidents, past or those who hope to aspire to be in the future or even again, it starts to become a red state or blue state conversation. When we're talking about sure. these presidents and their love for the game of golf, it seems to be cutting across all political lines and barriers. Sure does, in ways that few things sadly do anymore. And if Joe Biden is running against Donald Trump this fall, as it looks like it's about to happen, I can predict with 100% certainty that our next president, whoever it is, will be a very enthusiastic golfer. This is fantastic stuff, Michael. We thank you very, very much for the amount Loved of time it. that you've given us and all this fun oh, information on the history of the presidency and their love for the game of golf. Be well, my friend. Thank you. Same to you, my friend. Bye-bye.